Okay, perfect. Sorry about that. Thank you for being patient. I no like worries. The settings. I was like, oh my god, I don't know how to do this. Um, <laughs> but nice. how are you? I've been good. I've been good. It's been uh, it's it's just I have a crazy day because uh, we, we just dropped a new song today, so I'm just. Like, I know. I just heard it. It's yeah. so good. Ninety days. Um, yeah, ninety days. Yeah. Amazing. You want to talk about that for a bit? Yeah. So, uh, ninety days is a song that I've had for a while now. I guess since like last year, and it's uh, it's really just about my obsession with the show Ninety Day Fiance. My <laughs> girlfriend and I we watch it every Sunday. That's our favorite show. And oh my god! <laughs> I kind of wrote it based around that. And, uh, Interesting. I've actually never seen that show. It's on TLC, though, right? Yeah, like, yeah I've heard of it. It's amazing because <laughs> I love TLC, but I've never seen that one. But it, it looks good. <laughs> it's insane. <laughs> it's amazing and insane, and yeah, I love it. I have to watch it. Um, I was like listening to it though, and I was like, you have such an interesting sound, and I think it's amazing. Um, I was listening to that song though, and I feel like I heard like. A little jazz influence like i heard a bunch of different like types of influences so like yeah. who do you love like who influences you so uh i have like a, a real love for like electro funk and and just like r&b and soul that stems from like old school music that stems from my parents like that's what we would listen to when i was growing up and then uh as i got older and finding myself and and uh, understanding like what I like, that's the music that I gravitate towards. It's not my parents' music. I guess that like represented my early records a little bit more. And now I feel like I want to I want to go back and, and pay tribute to the music I, I listened to growing up. And uh, that's what a lot of this record's about. Yeah. <laughs> I love that. Who were like some of those artists that you listened mm -hmm. to when you were like younger? Yeah, it was a lot of Cool in the Gang, uh, Earth, Wind and Fire. Uh, now that I've gotten older, I just started DJing. Like, uh, I really love Tim Maya. That's something I cool. found out on my own. Uh, Bobby Caldwell was also really big for me while writing this record. And Orange Juice is another uh, band that I'm obsessed with. Uh, I love Orange Juice. I actually recently just started to get into them. They're really oh, yeah, cool. They're, they're the best. <laughs> yeah, they're so good. Very cool. But then, yeah, so it's like you have the single. It just came out today. But then you yeah. have the album coming out. In January, right? Yeah, it's a cursed, it's a cursed year. Uh, <laughs> we're not putting it out in 2020. It will come out 2021, and hopefully things are open up again, and maybe we play a show. I don't know. I can't make these <laughs> predictions. I'm just talking out loud now, uh, thinking out loud, and and I think uh, I think something will happen. I think I think the world will open up next year. I don't know. I can't say that for sure, but I hope so. That's my dream, and I hope I get the tour again soon. Because uh, yeah. I, I know that. it's such yeah. a rough time right now and it's like I miss live music so much and everyone I think everyone just is dying to like you know go see a live show soon but I think it's good yeah. that you did it in January because it's like a nice way to start a new year you know like a clean yes. start like <laughs> there's always this optimism around the new year our last show was actually on New Year's Eve and oh, uh, wow. there's optimism that night and there shouldn't have been <laughs> I know. I know. We can only hope, though, like, it'll get better, hopefully, in the new year. Yeah, I think yeah. it definitely will. Yeah, I think it can't get any worse. Oh, it could, but, like, yeah, it can't get any worse. Because <laughs> you're in Santa Barbara, right? Yeah, Are you I'm in Santa, Santa Barbara, Barbara right now? So how is it over there? I don't really know, like, how it is right now there. Uh, our numbers have always been relatively low. They're kind of large in the county because of other parts of the county that are put like you know an hour and a half away from Santa Barbara, the city. Mm -hmm. uh, but then all the college students came back to UCSB, and the numbers are spiking again because they're from everywhere, and they don't care, oh and it's just God. partying, and the masks are off. Uh, so mm -hmm. I'm just avoiding. I'm, luckily, they have their own little island over there, so no one has to go over <laughs> there. Stay there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> they do a good job of like you know quarantining themselves. Yeah, but yeah. It's, it's it's been uh, pretty bad over there. But other than that, you know, I don't leave my house very often. Uh, this is this past like two weeks has been the craziest because we shot two videos, two music videos. Uh, had the one we went to Vegas for, which was really freaky. Ooh. And uh, yeah, I feel good now though. I don't, I didn't get sick or anything, and I came back negative. But yeah, very good. Very, That's good. Very, Freaky to like leave the state. I was like, oh, 
<laughs> not apparently <laughs> leave my house, let alone the state, yeah. Which video did you go to Vegas to shoot? There's a song called Vegas on the new record. Oh, uh, okay. And that will be the next single that we drop. Uh, we're not dropping any singles in November for obvious reasons. It's going to be insane. I think yeah, we got some, I have other stuff we're putting out, though. And then December, we're putting out another single called uh, Las Vegas. Very cool. Very nice. So yeah. the upcoming album is called Mid- Mid-Century Modern Romance. Yeah. How would you describe it? Yeah, it's In like... like the, uh, Three words? Oh, I don't or know. You can use more than three words. I was just like, <laughs> <laughs> you can use it however, however many words you want. <laughs> it's like, um, yeah, an ode to my family, the music I grew up listening to, the music that I DJ all the time, which is like old school and, and uh, old school music, electric, the funk, R&B. Uh, it's all over the place. There's some stuff that like reminds <laughs> yeah. me of Steely Dan, like my attempt at Steely Dan and there's a few different stuff, but yeah, it's like mostly disco and, and some, some old R&B songs, Very but still trying to make it my own. Yeah, I can definitely hear all the different influences like in your music, and I think it's absolutely brilliant. Mm, um, but I was like, oh, wow, like you can hear like a little bit of everything. I think it's very cool. Yeah. I love it. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so if you could collab with any artist, any band ever, Ever. Who would it be? I'm curious. Yeah. Uh, let's see. I think. I think I think I'd have to go with Edwin Collins from Orange Juice. Uh, he's just like someone I absolutely loved, and and I love the way their career trajectory kind of went, where they went from rock and roll and then started doing like more dance music, and mm-hmm. that's like exactly the blueprint I kind of followed, where I went from my surf and my you know, alternative rock or whatever to this now dance music. And, and they're a big ins- inspiration for that. I, I really, I've always loved our artists that kind of have like periods. So, you know, Bobby Darren was like Splish Splash and then he did Beyond the Sea. And then he did If I Was a Carpenter, like there's like three different periods. And I don't know, I guess this, this is probably my second period right now. That I'm in, which is like, <laughs> <laughs> very cool interest so you really like orange juice i love orange juice yeah they're one of my favorite bands yeah he accidentally yeah. followed me on a twitter once edwin collins i like sent him a tweet and uh i think he yeah he, act- he definitely hit the reply but he hit follow so i was gonna say he accidentally followed you <laughs> yeah he just replied to my tweet and ended up accidentally following me and then i noticed like five minutes later he unfollowed me which is funny. oh my god no way i don't i don't expect him to follow me yeah. Oof, no, but like, I mean, he, so he replied to your tweet and then yeah. also followed you that, okay, well, I mean, he replied to your tweet, which is cool, but like, I'll take that, yeah, but yeah, <laughs> I'll always take that. God. So I was looking through your Instagram, um, yeah. and I believe it was last week I saw you posted on your story, somebody got a tattoo, yeah, I, for one I of guess, your songs. <laughs> I guess that's the uh, first, the first Dom Telefonte tattoo, I guess it, it's, it's out there now, which is pretty, pretty amazing, I was like in shock. And, uh, I know that's like surreal I saw that. I was like oh my god I can't even imagine like how cool that is like someone got a tattoo of one of your songs why would someone do that I don't no, know that's... but but I love it oh that's sick that's awesome I was like it's oh amazing. my god like what a feeling like yeah I was just like going I was just driving to go buy a salad or, like I ordered a salad <laughs> and then I went to this place to go get it and I was like what the fuck I was looking at my phone I was like why would that's amazing it's amazing <laughs> but also why would you do that I don't know it's, it's uh it's from they the love last, the music. True. It was the last song off my last record um, called Vivre du Vai, which was just like a nice, I, I had this title called To Live Two Lives, and I felt like that was like too wordy in English, so I just put it in French, uh, and it sounds and looks better. Than Everything <laughs> sounds beautiful life. in French. I know, <laughs> I know. So that was like the main idea behind doing that. Very cool. And that's what they got, that's what they got written on very nice. I was also looking through Instagram and I saw you have a podcast, which is yeah. awesome. Very cool. So when did you start doing that? Uh, I, saw, I did like three episodes at the end of 2008. No, at the end of 2019. And I, it was audio only. And it got to the point where I was like, I don't, I don't know. I want to put them on YouTube. Like the big idea was like to put content on, on, on YouTube that wasn't music because I can't realistically put a lot of music on, on, on YouTube. Like 
uh, making music videos kind of expensive. It's super expensive to make music videos. So I thought like, you know, with, I love podcasts. I watch a lot of podcasts on YouTube. Uh, I could, I would love to do one. And there's, I noticed there was a, a need in that space of like artists interviews and because mostly interviews end up on blogs like yours or other yeah. stuff like that. Like, are you putting your stuff on YouTube? Yeah, I am. I put them on YouTube and then I put there them on the blog. Like I embed the videos. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. Yeah. That's super important. I think that's super important. And, and mostly interviews with musicians end up on blogs or they they send you the email, you the questions and then you fill them out, which is nice too. Yeah. But, uh, there's something great about just listening to an artist for an hour, hour and a half, two hours or whatever it may be like uninterrupted and you can talk about anything. And, and I really love that idea. So I thought I'll do this and I'll talk to my friends who I know. And then once I get more comfortable, I'll reach out to people I don't know, which is, it's really scary. And then, uh, yeah, but mostly, yeah, it's mostly so far just a lot of my friends. There's only a couple of like, I don't know this person at all. And I'm going blindly into an interview. Oh, really? Yeah. That's, those are the scariest <laughs> ones, yeah. Because I feel like you've had some, like, cool people on there. Like, I was listening. I saw you did one with uh, Jonathan Rado. I was yeah. like, oh, very cool. You're very yeah. good at it. You're very natural, <laughs> like. Um, Rado and I, Rado did my first record. Uh, we had, like, the same manager for a while. So that's how I've known him and Sam France and all the Fox Eastern people. I've known them for a while. Nice. Very cool. Yeah, I was like, oh, wow. He's, like, really good at it. Like, very calm very, <laughs> you were no it's like it's harder than it looks like i feel like interviewing like even when i started i was like oh my god like it's a little like nerve-wracking but no you're really yeah. good at it. oh thank you yeah it's, it can be very nerve-wracking and a lot of musicians don't like the talk which i found out maybe mm -hmm. that's why we don't get interviewed a lot <laughs> maybe that's why they just stick to the questions on the email but a lot of them don't like the talk and they're one word answers and then you're kind of like okay we're You're like, mm -hmm. yeah. Anyway, yes. yes. <laughs> Moving on. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I it happens all the time. I've experienced that before, but I feel like for the most part, like, there are a lot of like musicians out there who do like love to talk about, it. and it's like I appreciate totally. that, you know, like I appreciate totally. the the conversation. So yeah, I appreciate yeah. it too. <laughs> I think that there's something weird like in in us that like doesn't want to like overly talk. Because we're so used to being at shows or like at a bar <laughs> where it's like you don't want to like talk someone's ear off because then you're annoying, but you realize that this is the medium you're allowed to talk your ear off and yeah, be like, annoying. Talk like, talk my ear off. Talk. <laughs> yeah, talk all the time. But most times, like, well, I don't want to bother you. I'll, I'll talk to you later. Like, and then you find and someone. And it's like, else no, bother me. It's fine. Yeah, but that's I why I brought you on here to, to like, bother you. <laughs> I want you to talk. Yeah, yeah. exactly. You get it. Yeah. Totally. I've done enough of these now where I just like keep going and going and going. Exactly. Yeah. With each one, I feel like it gets easier and you learn more and mm -hmm. all that jazz. <laughs> it's definitely like doing a podcast has, has led more people reaching out to me to talk, which is nice because before I never like got asked to do this stuff. But like the more and more that people see and people find out about the podcast, it's like, oh, like, do you want to do mine? Like, and then it's like, okay, yeah, I didn't even know. Even if they're small, I'll do them just because it's like fun and, and you never know. Yeah, definitely. It's like fun yeah. to do. Yeah, yeah. for sure. Totally. Well, awesome. Well, thank you so much for taking the time to do this with sure. me. And yeah, I no cannot worries. wait to hear the new album in January. Very exciting. And yeah, exactly. I think what you're doing is really amazing and really special. Mm -hmm. And I can't wait to hear the whole thing. Ah, thank you. Yeah, thank <laughs>